Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And finally, Ram Naomi is round the corner on 2nd April, depending on where you stay, on 1st or on 2nd. And there are some beautiful things which we can learn from the Ramayan during this lockdown period, especially. And many of you have requested me to make a Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita videos for during this lockdown period and yes definitely i am going to make the videos so here it is first lockdown video for this week and uh, sometimes we think that oh this is the first ever lockdown in history which has happened but actually that's not the case because if you are familiar with the stories from the vedic tradition then you will know that there had been many 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 lockdowns like this before and do you know which was the longest lockdown my god the longest <laughs> it was not an official lockdown that that was an unofficial lockdown yes one lockdown we of course know which was for seven days uh which i will also discuss which is the govardhan leela where uh indra the king of the heavens had tormented the Vrijvasis, the vindavan uh, Vrindavan Vasi is the residence of the village Vrindavan in India, where Lord Krishna had uh, then taken the Govardhan hill on the top of his uh, finger like this for seven days, seven nights. So, and it was pouring outside. They say that there were uh, pillars of rain which Indra was uh, pouring with the help of the Samvartaka clouds. Samvartaka clouds are the one who are they, are, they are invoked during pralaya, dissolution, destruction, right? So these clouds were invoked untimely by Indra that time. But today is not Govardhan Leela. <laughs> Today's topic is a discussion on Ayodhya. Yes, you heard it right. Ayodhya was under lockdown for how many years? Yes, you are right. For freaking long years it was under lockdown yes if you read the Ramayana you will understand Ayodhya was like a ghost town it was like a Shmashan it was like a graveyard why when Lord Ram left Ayodhya that time I mean left means not when he left from this world but when he was sent to exile by Kai Kai his stepmother and during those years, Ayodhya was totally under lockdown. And there, there, there was like, there was, it was wrecking havoc all over the place, right? So today, let's discuss some beautiful instances. See, most of the times uh, when we discuss the Rama and we discuss about Lord Ram, which is perfectly fine. We discuss about Sita and Ram and their lives. But there are, uh, luckily, fortunately, along with Sita Ram, there are many other characters also in the Rama. Apart from Hanumanji, of course. Uh, so one such character is Bharat Maharaj. So... They say generally the word Ramayana means iron of Lord Ram. It's the journey of Lord Ram. But Lord Ram's journey is not some uh, individual modern, uh, like uh, modern days, there's a lot of talk on independence. Stay, al stay alone, stay strong, be like a wall. Nobody can hit you. you know, be strong, be impeccable, be imperishable. That's not how the Ramayana is designed. Ramayana is basically... Although it is the story of Lord Ram, but it is the story of his relationships with his devotees. That is what is the Ramayana. The Ramayana is not a book where Ram is taking a bow and arrow and going on killing demons. Karadhushan, Ravan, Kumkaran. No, that's not what Ramayana is. That is the secondary purpose of the Ramayana. As Lord Krishna says in the Gita, Yada, Yada, Hi Dharmasya. Glanir Bhavati Bharata Abhyutthana Madharmasya Tadatmanam Sijam Yaham That one of the purposes of why I appear in this world, uh, Krishna, Vishnu, is that I want to annihilate the uh, demons and the miscreants from the face of earth and, and uh, get rid of them uh, for, for the entire universe actually, not only the earthly beings because they terrorize even the demigods. 
and this is very uh, this is very uh, this can be seen very visibly uh, when uh, hanuman ji is about to go to uh, ayod uh, to lanka to start sita devi yes, so we all know how hanuman ji goes and find sita devi so uh, in, in that before that lord ram instructs all of the um, all of the vanaras that uh, if you find uh, sita or if you find um, then uh, i mean uh, the that don't kill anybody just just find her and just come and give back the news to me and in fact that's what hanuman ji does exactly in fact hanuman ji see hanuman is a perfect servant perfect servant knows the mind of the master he doesn't he doesn't only go by the words the perfect servant also knows what the master wants ultimately so when uh, hanuman ji is uh, allows indra ji to capture him with the uh, brahma pass dinak pass or the brahmastra either ways which whichever weapon indra ji used to capture him then uh, in uh, hanuman ji says to ravan that if i want i can kill you now but i won't do that because if i kill you then all these other crooks who are sitting with you yes so in uh, there are many companies so one is uh, duryodhan and company which is in the mahabharat hmm. duryodhan and company these are uh, big big company you know million dollar enterprise you know <laughs> all these crooks are together in duryodhan and company headed by himself then his mama shakuni then his brother dushasan then his best friend karna and then all his uh, his other brothers then his uh, father the great dhritarasht the one and only spectacular <laughs> and then in ramayan there is another company you know it's rnc ravan and company yeah, so that's also a company headed by all the crooks so headed by ravan himself then his uh, sweet little brother kumbhakarna <laughs> kumbhakarna was his uh, younger brother um, and then their most beloved uh, most uh, charming and most uh, beautiful sister suparnaka suparnaka and then there is his, his son indrajit hmm? and then atikai then prahast narantak devantak all these cooks together the only two good personalities and surprisingly they are extraordinary personalities uh, on ravan side is one of course mandodari his wife and the second one is none other than his brother vibhishan of course he is a great devotee of lord ram and he is an exceptional character in the ramayan hmm. so except these two all the people they are cooks of the highest order you know, in ravana's family and entire his entire lineage of course i mean i mean not lineage i mean he his his own lineage not his uh, father's lineage because kubera was his uh, step brother and he he is a great personality and his father is also a great personality uh, vishrava and his grandfather is also another great personality maharishi Mah kulastya so that is why hanuman did not wipe ravan out when he went there and he knew the mind of lord ram because lord ram wanted to wipe all these demons out together that is why hanuman did not kill ravan and then he burned the entire lanka and he came back and similarly we see the story of bharat maharaj also so bharat maharaj he was uh, he became the king of ayodhya for 14 years when lord ram was not there in fact he was not exactly the king he was acting like the king because um, he had uh, coronated the padukas the that uh, of lord ram in the throne and then he he used to go and read reports okay today this happened today that happened hmm? the lord ram's footsteps you know, the padukas he used to worship them literally so therefore ramayan is a story of relationships it is not a story of uh, some uh, god coming and hitting around demons yes that that's important as i said but that secondary the the most important thing if you want to learn from the ramayan it, it is the, the 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 most crucial the most crucial the most 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 crucial is 
how to deal with people that is exact that's exactly what the ramayana teaches of course not not just at a mundane level at a higher level also so for example if you see the ramayana then you will see uh, bharat maharaj when he came to know that uh, uh, kk has banished lord ram for 14 years then imagine in today's scenario if it would be any other family uh, maybe the the brother may not be very happy but may, maybe the brother is not that disappointed also because he is going to be the king it depends on the family of course but considering the court cases related to property in this kaliyuga it is highly apprehensive that the brother would be displeased most of the cases maybe the brother would be happy oh yes it's all mine after all now okay but bharat maharaj was not like that he was totally the opposite in fact he said i will imprison this crooked wicked lady because of which our entire family has been destroyed and my father has died yes kk is his own mother but he is still saying like this imagine the level of love which he has for lord ram imagine that just just imagine how how much love can he have for ram and he doesn't talk to kk for all those 14 years and then when lord ram comes back and then he goes and tells to bharat that why are you not talking to your mother kk and then he says don't speak a word about that lady i don't want to even hear or even see the face of this wicked lady and then lord ram says no my dear brother <laughs> she was she is and she will always be your mother do not forget that she is the cause of your existence she has given birth to you do not disrespect her like this if you disrespect her it will bring this this it will bring dismay to our uh, dynasty please do not do that go and talk to her go and touch her feet my god this is what lord ram says and then he himself goes and talks to mantra mantra is the one who had poisoned kekai to send ram to the forest okay so he goes and uh, greets uh, mantra also so imagine i mean uh, a person who has ruined your entire life your entire life your entire existence and then you go and say namaskar to that person you go and touch that person's feet can can you believe it that any normal person can do this well of course and then i was talking about the lockdown so ayodhya was also under lockdown it was unofficial lockdown mm -hmm. it is said that there was for 14 years you know as you know in diwali they uh, celebrate with uh, lighting lamps did you ever think why do they light lamps always because for 14 freaking years they did not light a single lamp ayodhya was totally dark it was like a graveyard my god everybody was just sitting inside their home and they were on the verge of death all the people in ayodhya they were just about to die the only reason they were living the only hope which they had was that yes one day the light of ayodhya who is that yes the sun of ayodhya sun means not s o n it's s u n the sun god <laughs> one day sun will rise in ayodhya and who is that sun yes it is lord ram himself one day he shall return and just with that one hope all the residents of ayodhya they used to delay they used to postpone their death every every moment they used to feel that oh maybe i will die now but they used to tell themselves no 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 one day lord ram will return one day we will see him one day we will be with him one day he will be our ruler one day he will be our king and just to see that day let me be alive for some for one moment at least and every moment they used to delay like this can you imagine delaying 14 years like this my god it's impossible and and imagine the situation of his uh, brothers imagine what is the situation of bharat maharaj imagine the level of guilt which he would have had in his heart that because of not because of him but he used to feel because of him lord ram is in in uh, in the forest he used to feel like that 
you know, imagine the situation of Shatrughan, Lord Ram's uh, youngest brother. Hmm? What would be his situation? See, Lord Ram went to the forest. Lakshman wanted to go with him, he went. Hmm? Then Bharat wanted to uh, stay in Nandigram or outside Ayodhya, he stayed. But this poor Shatrughan, he wanted to stay with Bharat, but Bharat instructed him that, no, you cannot stay with me, you must stay in the kingdom, you must take care of our mothers, Kaushalya, Sumitra and Keke, because they are old, they need help, they need care, they need support, so you cannot move out like this, you must stay there, it is my instruction. So, among the four brothers, all the three did what they wanted, but Shatrughan could not do what he wanted. So, his sacrifice, his his pain is actually the most. He suffered the most because for fourteen years he stayed in that palace. Imagine that palace was like a, I mean, it was like a graveyard. You know, it's like uh, you can't imagine how that palace would be you know, without Lord Ram, without Bharat, without uh, Lakshman, you know, without without Dasharat Maharaj. You know. Imagine how the how the mothers, you know, these three. I mean, even if you include KK, because KK had lamented later on that because of this crooked mantra I heard, and she poisoned me, and because of that I ruined everything. So imagine what would be the situation of these three ladies, you know, that uh, they they are they are not able to see Lord Ram. Imagine how their situation would be. You know, we cannot imagine. Now, now you can imagine. Now try to think. You know, uh, many times people tell me, like for example, in my case, I am here. My I am here in Germany. I, my parents are there in India, in Guwahati, Assam. So I don't know when I will be able to see them. Now in India, there is this lockdown till fifteenth. Maybe uh, they may declare that, oh, this is increasing lockdown for the next six months or one year, two years, or maybe one month, two months, three months. Nobody knows what they will do. Who knows what will happen in Germany? Tomorrow they may declare uh, lockdown in Germany. It's already lockdown in my state of area. So I don't know when I will be able to see them. Many people are telling me, my daughter is in US, my son is in uh, Australia. When I will see them, please tell me, when will we reunite? Uh, so even you may be in the same city, but your your brother may be in some other home. Your sister sister in law may be somewhere else you know, within the same city, but you are not able to meet each other. So imagine how was the situation that time. But then they 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 did not lose hope because they had full faith that Lord Ram is Vishnu himself. He is our ultimate protector. And therefore, they all the residents of Ayodhya they postponed death. They cheated death. Actually, it is said you know? they they used to play games with death personified. Every moment they used to trick death somehow. Oh, actually, I am going to die, but you know, some reason or the other, they would stay alive because they believed that maybe yes, one day Lord Ram returns, and then Ayodhya will be Ayodhya again. And by step by step, moment after moment, delaying death like this, just 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 because of their faith in Lord Ram, they survived the entire fourteen years. And finally, on the day of Diwali, that moment came when Lord Ram returned along with Sita Devi and Lakshman and Hanuman and all the Vanas, Maharaj Sugriv, Maharaj Guha, then. Um, Jambavan, then Bharat Maharaj also returned, everybody returned to Ayodhya and there was grand celebration, there was great, great, great grand celebration. You know, Ayodhya was decorated like never before, ever in the history of human civilization. And then finally, that day is celebrated as Diwali, Dipavali, Dipotsav, these are different names. And then Lord Ram was coronated as the emperor of Ayodhya. He was the ruler of the entire world, actually. And then started Ram Rajya. It is said that uh, when Lord Ram was ruling Ayodhya, then Ayodhya was more beautiful, more prosperous, more healthy, more happier than even Amaravati, which is Indra's city in the heavens. 
So Ayodhya was more opulent, it was more prosperous, people were more happy than even in the heavens. In fact, Ayodhya is non different from the spiritual world itself. The spiritual world manifested, I mean, the Ayodhya is the spiritual world itself, all right? So all the divine spiritual qualities, they, they were present in Ayodhya. It was like uh, the reign of Lord Ram. As that, that is why they say Ram Rajya it was. <laughs> and uh, therefore, currently our situation is also like uh, we are under some kind of lockdown because of some virus or whatever the reason is. But if we just read the Ramayana and if we just see how the residents of Ayodhya had uh, stayed with this hope that yes, one day there will be uh, Lord Ram will return. So similarly, now Lord Ram is outside. Outside doesn't mean he's outside somewhere, hovering and roaming. He, because of this Kali Yuga, he has gone, uh, we have sent him out, like KK had sent him out of Ayodhya. We have also sent Lord Ram out of our hearts. And therefore, Moments like these, moments like this lockdown, moments like Ram Naomi, moments like Diwali, these are the times when we can invite Lord Ram back to our hearts. And the way Ayodhya was like a graveyard, that is how the hearts of people in Kali Yuga are today. Everybody that I talk, 99.9% .9 they are unhappy. They are stressed, they are depressed, they are miserable, they are under anxiety, they are under fear, their desires are ruining them, you know, their desires are pricking their hearts like this, you know, it's like, uh, I don't have that. <laughs> it's like a compass in geometry, you know, it's like pricking you and your blood is coming out, you want to enjoy, you want to do this, you want to do that, but the resources are not there, you don't have money. You don't have members of the opposite sex to enjoy or either you are married and you are frustrated, you are unhappy, you are just lying down doing so many nonsense activities. People are getting down into addictions, pornography, you know, smoking, drinking, drugs, gambling, then prostitution, then adultery, so many things, my God. Eating meat. See what meat eating has done. The whole world has been halted. Because of this uh, bats which these people were eating in some country, whichever country it is. And that is why our hearts are also like the graveyard. Our heart is currently like Ayodhya. Not the cities, not the countries, not India, not Germany. These are not like Ayodhya, which is the main Ayodhya. The main Ayodhya is our heart. Our hearts have gone under lockdown. We are not happy in this material world. Why? Because Lord Ram is not there. Unless he returns, there will never be any happiness. Never, 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 ever. If you want to try it, then try it. <laughs> I'm telling you with my limited experience. Not from my own life. From my own life and by seeing others' life. Now, somehow I have been uh, privileged enough uh, by maybe my karma or my destiny, whatever, to be born in a very uh, uh, aristocratic family who has been associated with uh, government leaders, politicians and IAS officers and all the creams and the big shots of uh, this country. I have stayed with them. I have had lunch with them. I have had dinner with them. And I'm not boasting about myself. What I'm trying to tell you is I've seen their lives and I have and I, I can conclude that they are not happy. Hmm? Big, big politicians, I have seen. I have met them. Even this time, last time when I was in India, I met uh, so many politicians and I have seen their lives. Miserable. I met film, film stars. They are miserable. You know, trying to pull some other film star down. I met singers, dancers. Nobody is happy, I am telling you. Even including astrologers. They are not happy. Hmm? For some reason or the other. Why? Because... The sun is not there. It's darkness. All right. So we may have this lockdown for one week, two weeks, three weeks, 10 days, or one year, six months, or maybe 10 years. <laughs> but always remember, our hearts have been eternally dark since the time you were born. Ask this question to yourself. 
Did you ever find happiness in this material world? Very less. It's like 0.00001% of the times you can claim that I am perfectly happy. Everything that I want is there and I am very, very, very happy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that is the nature of the material world as Lord Krishna says in the Gita. But when we do spiritual practices, we read scriptures like the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavad Gita, and the Srimad Bhagavatam, and we chant mantras, Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, Shri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, or we can chant Om Namo Narayanaya, we can also chant Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Om Namo Bhagavate Narasimhaya, these are the different Vishnu mantras which you can chant. And by that chanting, and by meeting people who are close to Lord Ram, only then we can invite him back to our hearts. Otherwise, our hearts will be like Ayodhya. It will always eternally be dark. All right. So... In case of Ayodhya, Lord Ram had uh, returned after 14 years. But if in case of our hearts, if we do not invite him, then God knows when he will come. <laughs> All right. So I would end the video by uh, speaking a shloka, which is from the ninth, ninth chapter, 30, 34th verse. Can you see? This is a very beautiful shloka. One of the beautiful shlokas here and this is something which is very crucial which we can do during lockdown okay all right ninth chapter 34th verse manmana bhava mad bhakto madhya jimam namaskuru mame vaishyasi yuktvaivam atmanam matparayanaha engage your mind always in thinking of me who is this me it's not me it's krishna <laughs> Krishna is telling to Arjuna in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, engage your mind always in thinking of me, become my devotee, offer obeisances to me and worship me, being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. Wow, this is one of the most beautiful slokas which I have ever read. And there is similar one sloka, it is in the 10th chapter, 9th verse. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are fully devoted to my service. And they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me. Who is the perfect example for this in the Ramayana? Yes, it is Lakshman and Hanuman, of course, including Sita Devi. So, beautiful verses, beautiful shloka. You know. Tenth shloka from the tenth chapter. Tesham satata yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam ye namam upayanti te. Those, to those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Tesham evanu kampartha maham magyana jamtama nashayam yatma bhavasthu jnana deepena bhasvata. To show them special mercy, I dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge, the darkness born of ignorance. Lamp, Diwali, lighting lamps. Alright? And then Arjuna says, Param Brahma, Param Dhamma. We will discuss this some other time. Wow, beautiful shlokas, back to back. 9 chapter, 10 chapter, fantastic. Alright? So please read the Bhagavad Gita during this time and uh, pray to Lord Ram uh, exclusively. You can pray to Lord Ram, you can pray to Lakshman, you can pray to Devi Sita, you can pray to Bharat Maharaj, you can pray to Hanuman, you can pray to Sugriv, you can pray to Jambavan, you can pray to everybody, you can pray to even Vibhishan. Alright, that... Uh, may I develop some qualities, maybe just 0.0000001% of the qualities which you had, you know, the devotion which you had towards Lord Ram. May I just develop a tiny drop of that ocean, oceanic qualities which you had and then my life will be successful and 
as krishna says in the gita no tesham eva nukam patham aham agyana jamtam i will uh, with the shining lamp of knowledge i will destroy all the ignorance and only then lord ram shall return to ayodhya which is actually our hearts and only then our hearts will be illuminated and we will be happy just like the residents of ayodhya were so happy after 14 years of lord ram's returning all right thank you very much uh, please utilize this uh, festival properly and do spiritual practices to whatever extent possible and as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me then you can go to my website down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him jai shri ram